This is the Alliance Dispatch. Do you read us? Welcome back to another episode of the Alliance Dispatch. That is what we called. I was headbanging James and it really threw my entrance. You'll love it in the edit. Um, <laughs> along with uh, a new episode of the Alliance Dispatch, we've also got some exciting news about our future. James, take it away. Yeah, I'm doing very well, Danny. How are you? I'm um, fantastic. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, in terms of the Alliance Dispatch, or obviously a very new channel, well, spawned from a very old channel, we are expanding. Uh, so we've got the lovely legend that is Carl from formerly of uh, Crazy Killing Machine, a huge Keyforge UK uh, content creator. Um, he does a lot of he did a lot of streams and casting and things like that and website stuff. So watch this space. We are expanding. We'll be getting, getting a new logo to go with that because it won't just be me and Danny anymore. Um, and I'm sure we'll invite him on from time to time, and you can uh, yeah. you can get up on your screens as well as another dispatcher. So that's our our news. Yeah, yeah, and he also did the streaming for the Twickenham event, didn't he? Yes, yeah. So he's working so... a lot with OPE. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So some of you may have already met him. Um if if you got streamed during that event maybe now that i've got some inside contacts i can be like oh you know stream me game one you know stream me game one yeah. give me my moment yeah um, i mean we, so he, he was a judge uh in keyforge days alongside myself so we go way back so he's yeah he's a good lad yeah yeah we've got some rumblings about you know possible website possible like uh, more written content like uh from like the your destiny days for all you um destiny fans out there um and yeah obviously some of that game streaming goodness maybe some guest commentary and stuff from events where maybe he'll just record stuff and then we can do some nice voiceover we just we don't know five hours worth of unlimited content and talk about it that sounds like a great afternoon <laughs> yeah we have yeah. we have no idea what we, he's gonna yeah, bring we, to the table but he will be bringing something to the table so let's yeah. go so you know if you've got any extra ideas about what carl can do i'm sure he'll be in the comments but drop some messages for him um if you want to see anything in particular and it's the same as always from me and james uh we have no idea what we're doing guide us please please uh, luckily though ffg saved this week for content because uh, they did a wonderful uh content community design dev chat, chat. Dev chat. Yeah. Dev chat. They did a dev chat. A dev chat. Yeah. That's not very imaginative, is it? They should have called it like a a developer holocron or they yeah, they called it designer chats. Yeah, a bit boring. Just the official title. Yeah. Needs uh, developer holocron. I'm I'm uh, campaigning for a name change for them. Okay. I mean why don't we call this episode the developer holocron? Why don't we be the the yeah. unpacker, the packed down version yeah. of what they're yeah, I don't know. We've done it. We've done it. We did it live. We did it live, guys. Yeah. Right. So, big announcement, even before they kind of really started about any of the dev stuff, that was the uh, big changes to organized play. There's been, what, one official tournament, which was Twickenham's launch event, um, <laughs> which has the, which had the ridiculous uh, unlimited product only or plain product only. And everyone uh, just hated it. Please, you mean. I, don't, I don't think a single person agreed with that sentiment at all. Basically, we don't want swastikas or weird anime babes on our mats. And that seems Speak fine. for yourself. Speak for yourself, Dan. <laughs> all right, James wants big anime babes on his mat. And now we can do it. Oh, no, still I, we can't I, do it. Just, Judges just of the, the world. Book. Just the swastikas, Danny, please. Um, <laughs> well, I I'm mean, the a, Imperium, the Empire, sorry, not the Imperium. The Empire, yeah. very fascist, so checks yeah, out, actually. True. So, yeah, no no fascists or racist or, you know, just horrible mats, which is a thing we could all get behind, which everyone is equally unified by as they were unified against the original policy of yeah. it I has mean, to be school I school. mean, so many people at Twickenham uh, just had their, you know, Star Wars TCG or Destiny play mats, and they're like, I'm just going to use it until a judge comes over and tells me not to. And then I'm just going to turn it upside down. And then I'm just going to use it the next game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just craziness there. Yeah. So, yeah, so that was that was the, the headline news. They literally, I think they led with it because... Yeah, I mean, it's it pretty was, massive it was... as well. And I wonder yeah. if part of the Game Genic deal was originally based on... Uh, 
their stuff being pretty mm. much the only official stuff unless you yeah I, I, this, I mean they're owned by asmodee right they're both owned by asmodee so they mm. are technically the same company but obviously there are things that go on with shares and shareholders and all you know yeah. this corporate stuff so it's not i don't think it's as easy as some people are saying mm. No, no, it's it's it can't be that because they're owned by the same company. They just wanted to sell more stuff, but yeah, yeah, there are things that goes on there. You know, they are technically different companies. So yeah, sure. yeah, I think there there might have been some sort of deal there, but obviously wasn't very popular with literally anyone. <laughs> with with anyone but them. Yeah. So yeah. it's good that that's in the bin. Yeah, I can get my dark wall playing that out. You can. I'm yeah. just going to hold it up to the camera for our audio listeners. This is a a really glary. Darth Maul World Championships map, which you can't really make out. There's his eye, though. Wonderful Terrible. audio Terrible. content for you all. So, I mean, that's actually, as well, like, more channel news is that in the time between the last episode and this episode, you have sorted out audio for us. So we do have audio listeners now, hopefully, maybe. Yes, that is very true. Um, a couple of days after the last episode, we did go uh, on to Spotify for podcasters. So we're on Spotify and we're on Apple Music. So if you just want to listen to our voices, if you're in the car or whatever and want to get distracted by mine and James's lovely faces, uh, you, we are available in audio form now, um, and they should automatically update as I do this, which is good. That's, uh, we're almost back to where we were uh, halfway through our Destiny lifespan within two weeks. So, you know, I feel like we've really, really grown as creators. Yeah. Huge, huge growth. And you can grow with us. You just have to hit that like and subscribe and grow with us. Please grow with us. Thank you. Well, that, that was some excellent shilling, James. Well done. Okay, so um, what was the other big hits from our dev chat, dev holocron? So, yeah, for me, uh, the holocron that we're now calling it, yeah. uh, for me, Tyler, uh, one of the devs, is a huge Grand Inquisitor fan. Mm -hmm. And as a huge Grand Inquisitor fan, you know, game meets game matches game you know game recognizes game yeah well done tyler i'm i'm all for that that's pretty cool yeah yeah i mean out of a lot of the leaders he has the most unique um action in the sense that there are, obviously there are cards that do let you ready back up after they've been mm. exhausted but to kind of have that on demand is mm. interesting and like the interactions you have with the grip mechanic as well like yeah, and he had a quite good yeah. finish uh, last weekend at one of the one Ks in America. I think he got to top eight, I believe, which is yeah. I mean, there was there was that ninth place that we tried to find from from Twickenham yeah, as well. Yeah. So and they, are, they do he... exist. I think there is a deck there, and I think it's only going to get stronger as we get a bigger card pool, which I think they did say in the dev chat as well. Like the more things with more like three or more health, or you know, with yeah. grit or the more raid grit or no the, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely and... going to do cool stuff yeah and it was interesting he did say that he thinks that i think uh yellow as the splash color is really good but mm -hmm. i've not looked at that particularly myself yet i'm more looking at blue because of grit because you know yeah. where the, the grit is and that seems really obvious to me but i'm gonna have to try it with yellow as well to see what he's talking about yeah well it's you get to play boba fett if you go yellow yeah that's the, probably why probably not why it's I'm probably why it's good can... get to get to yeah. slam boba fett on turn three um, yeah, and I, and I guess they also pointed out something um, around this time or just after it, which was about um, how like drafting heroes worked. Um, that all the common heroes are kind of have their mechanics within the set they're in, and then yeah. the rare heroes are kind of more loosey goosey with with the cards within the set they're in, or and they're more likely to get more um, more tools from other sets. Um, cause yeah. I guess thinking about it, you know, there's a lot of imperial and rebel in this set. Um, which mm. is great for Tarkin and Leia, but as soon mm. as you go to the next set, which is what like Mandal like Mandalorian TV shows slash early mm. uh, prequel sequels kind of era, yeah. um, there's also going to be a lot less of uh, rebels and uh, and Imperial. So it's actually yeah. and, and that's you know so obvious. As soon as I heard that, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, that's really Thanks smart design. <laughs> Um, yeah. And obviously, and... Graz Inquisitor being one of those rare heroes does mean that we're going to see his little bold face uh, yeah. for, for years, I reckon. Um, until yeah, I until I'm you seem to think that it. next Kylo Ren will just be a very similar card. <laughs> That's my prediction. Yeah, we have, I have a £5 pound bet with James yeah. about Kylo Ren that it won't be uh, a red hero 
that has an ability that interacts with damaging your own units. If it's it anything it other than that, I win. Well, if, if, if he's got grit, if he, what the, the deal was actually, Daniel, is if he fits in the Grand Inquisitor shell, yeah. or if he can basically replace the Grand Inquisitor leader and have that those those deck cards, which yeah. he's going to be red. I'm sorry, just is. So... He's going to be blue. Yeah, we'll see. Well, either way, I'm playing a blue-red Grand Inquisitor deck and it works pretty well. Tuck so. in town. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Whatever it's called. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty cool. And like one thing he did say here, uh, I've written down, it gives people a reason to go back and explore, which is a nice way of putting what you said, really, which is, yeah, like like you say, for a few years, maybe, yeah. until whenever rotation happens, we can be going back and looking at these heroes under new lights, under new moments. Like, sort of... IGAEA or Jin, they'll have their time. Well, yeah, I mean, he's big big fans of Jin on the uh, designer chats. Let me, not Jin, sorry, IG88 on the designer yeah. chats. I couldn't even bring myself to say it. I, yeah. I, I caught myself. I mean, like, hey. I was inspired immediately immediately after watching that, and I sent James uh, a red red IG88 deck, um, you did. which I absolutely smashed the AI on force table. So it's probably you know S tier. Probably S tier. Probably that S tier. Um. Uh, yeah, so moving on from that, they also said what I found interesting was they thought Steadfast was unplayable, um, maybe even just Draft Chaff. Yeah. Uh, the Steadfast being Steadfast Battalion, the green... 5-5. Uh, 5-5, five, five. Five, yeah. Yeah, with uh, Overwhelm. And if, you're yeah. abil- if your leader is in play when it attacks, it gain- can give an allied unit plus 2, plus 2, including yeah. itself, before it deals damage. Yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty good. And it only costs five, so you can ECL it. Yeah. Um, Is probably up there with, um, I always forget the name. I want to call it Maximum Barrage, but it's not. Overwhelming. Overwhelming Barrage. Mm -hmm. It's Maximum Firepower and Overwhelming Barrage in my head. Same card. One of them's good, the other one isn't. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I think. Is this, before we get into being the... uh, cancel ecl podcast yeah we may we should hashtag that uh yeah. make hats but do you think this is another symptom of ecl being so good that uh, technically what they thought was a bad card is actually really really good or do you think it's just a good card and they misevaluated it no it's trash without ecl got you thank you yeah moving on yeah <laughs> because you'll play it you play five for a five five which doesn't yeah. do anything it dies yeah. and it hasn't done anything very true uh, yeah uh yeah it is a trash card only made good by ecl um and depending on how good like green bases or other color bases are it's definitely going to be one of those cards you see drop uh depending on the health pools of uh leaders as well it's obviously really good mm-hmm. at the moment because there's a lot of seven health leaders if it kind of if the health of leaders kind of creeps up a bit more like it's you know ecl isn't good into luke vader or it is good in no, yeah, it's not good into Luke Vader or Chewy because oh, I've been playing a lot of Chewy this week. <laughs> nice, nice, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, speaking of Chewy as well, um, which has kind of driven me into probably more hero play this week. Millennium Falcon, best legendary in the set confirmed. Um, yes, I think the real. Uh, skill play with Millennium Falcon is knowing when to let it bounce back to your hand and not just be like, I'm going to pay one to keep it in play. Mm-hmm. Um, because just paying the three again to play it and hit it, okay, it's costing you two more resources. But also, you could just get st- your head stuck in that where it's like, oh, I need to pay for my Millennium Falcon, but now I can't play two cards this turn because I've used a, mm-hmm. I've used a resource. So I think yeah. just just always think about the at the start of your turn if you need that Falcon or not. It's yeah, it's it's flexibility is why it makes it so good. And and yeah. as you said, they in the dev chat they thought it was the the best L in the set, the best legendary card, yeah. uh, and is criminally underrated. And having played a fair bit of hand now, I would agree. I think it's an incredible card. I can't believe it's still only approximately fifteen pounds at the time of recording. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it also be like more. lets you trade. Um, it's got you know a fairly big booty for four for a three drop, mm-hmm. so you can trade, mm-hmm. damage it. Um, yeah. goes to your next turn. You'll be like, oh, it's got three damage on. I'll just whap it back to my hand, and it's back, and you get to heal it. Um, yeah. And then when you play it again, that turn comes in ready, so you can still mm. just swing with it. So, 
yeah very, being very able good. to be ready and just like threat and base is yeah. pretty huge and like you say like the break point of having four health is really good because you trade and then you can just bounce it back to heal or yeah. you know keep it out if you don't need to do anything else but it's yeah it's really really good yeah really yeah. good yeah i agree and like is there any other like legendaries you think personally are just like creeping under the radar where the people aren't really looking at or don't value i so i mean luke is amazing i think people are starting to clock that though to be fair yeah, I don't think that, third like, most expensive card in the set now i think oh really yeah, yeah. well yeah. then yeah i mean he is really good um yeah. i think as the game develops not even into set two or three but in this like as we mature as players into this first set i think the dual class elves yeah. could be better than people think that i think they're, yeah. they're I've, I've grabbed my play set of all three because it's like six pound a nice. card and i'm like yeah. some of these like they're all great cards mm -hmm. are they great at six mm. they're really good at four <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, obviously, they're they're very pushed at four, but that's like the reward for yeah, not splashing. Right. You have to have that incentive. Yeah. But yeah, I do think I'm speaking from a not mono color mm. uh, perspective yeah, when I say yeah. that they're like, underrated. I think yeah. at six cost, they pretty could be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like just in the Iden deck, being able to heal five mil six mm -hmm. is uh, whew, spicy, really spicy in that yeah. control matchup. Yeah, and Cunning is great. Uh, Cunning is probably my favourite one of them all. Uh, we sort of touched on that. Yeah. Someone playing it against you, but playing it slightly incorrect sequencing against you, but it could have done like a lot of work against you when in the mm. oh, is it mono yellow barber? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think I think it's uh, interesting. It's interesting that people have seen that their dual aspect and gone, nah, I don't want anything to do with that. Mm. Instead of thinking maybe you should look at it as it, it's potentially what, what else are you, so where, where i'm looking at now especially with the, the grand inquisitor with aggression is what else am i doing on that seventh turn mm. with that with those six resources and at the minute the consensus is to splash you know like throw a vet throw a raider down the star yeah. destroyer uh which is good it's a good card but i don't get excited about that the way i get excited about the seventh sister mm. you know on the turn before yeah um yeah yeah so maybe for six aggression ready something kill something you know yeah. defeat upgrades from luke you know that i think the the power in it as we just spoke about the millennium falcon is the flexibility is the multiple modes yeah um and i think that cannot be undervalued or overstated or whatever you want to say yeah. when it comes to these elves yeah i think i remember them talking about uh palpatine as well um and how that he's probably being a little bit slept on and the mono green palpatine where you do like the double resource the double dj death stars and then the double commands or the triples of, of each. Um, yeah, and, you yeah. know, that's nine ramp cards you've got in your deck mm -hmm. um, that you can play on turns three, four, and and onwards, really. So you can actually ramp into Palpatine quite incredibly quickly mm. if you're against, you're not against and, the Sabine and get blown up by the time you uh, finish ramping. But Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's always, there's always going to be that rock, paper, scissors with hard aggro. Like, I don't think you have a chance into Sabine or... The, even the inquisitor in a deck like that but yeah the like you say like the ability to ramp is so important in palps that i can see why they've recommended mono green because yeah. if you, like once you get to that late game that ability is so strong like his ability his passive ability is so strong but his, his flip ability is like when on his attack is, is amazing as well yeah you have to get there yeah. like you say and mono green is definitely the most efficient way of doing that yeah yeah i've played a couple of games in the pub because uh big up pub star wars unlimited best way to play um and i was playing uh bobby's from kt od's his chewy deck that he did his uh deck deck on last week that i played at my weeklies and i just played two games of it into pelp and uh yep yeah, can't go late game into a pelp with chewy it doesn't work i was just like oh i could play home one and then palpatine will flip and steal my home one <laughs> it's not a good feeling <laughs> no no that doesn't sound ideal no um but also just kind of think about it, that's my hot take for legendary i think home one is is incredible mm -hmm. um big eight drop huge body great ability to pull back a card and then gives everything heal your base it's uh that's an oh every, yeah that, every that hero green deck for me like mm, yeah that card is really scary yeah unfortunately it doesn't cost seven so it's not going in casino no that would be bad
Yeah. Um, um, I'm just kind of um, speaking about Palpatine as well. It's interesting about how they spoke about Mono Green on their dev diary, but then when they posted his list on Facebook, they went, oh, here is... Um, I've forgotten his name. I just remember them talking about Jeremy for like 20 minutes at the end, being like, he designed such great cards that yeah, I completely basically. forget the other two's names. Tyler and yeah. someone. Tyler and someone. Uh, but the other guy... Um, and they yeah. they showed off his deck, and he went, bl- and that was a blue Palpatine deck, um, and it's got some really cool stuff. But then you look at red Palpatine, it's like, oh, and then I get all the Force powers and and stuff. It's really interesting how you know you just splash that color in, it completely changes how you think about building your deck and the toolkit that that color gives yeah. you, um, and that you could throw it all out and just you know play yellow Palpatine and splash in all the Force powers and just play two more because you ramp so hard. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, to confirm, it was Danny Schaefer. Ah, uh, oh my Reed god, his name's like... Danny as well. Yeah, no, Routini. No, no excuses. No, I bet he's a Daniel pretending to be a Danny though. Maybe they're but, the worst you know. people, other than Adamses. Well, Daniel so Adams, worst person in the planet. Yeah, probably is. Probably is. I wouldn't know. Yeah, he wouldn't. You don't know anyone called that, do you? Uh, no, 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 uh, no, no, no. Um. <laughs> Uh, and then going on. on to, yeah, so I, I sold my Cassian this week, and then they go out and say oh, he's probably really good in the late game, hero-wise, and that he's probably being slept on. So have I sold my Cassian showcase for for Penny? I didn't sell it for Penny, so I got a good deal. But okay. interesting. Obviously, card, late, late game card draw, always good. Um, yeah. Getting three cards a turn is much better than getting two cards a turn. That's a 33% increase in card draw by basic Wait. math. Quick math, quick math. Um, the only thing I find interesting with Cassian and Hero in general is I feel like that deck is going to be fairly light to mid-range mm-hmm. and not going heavy in control. So when you are drawing those extra cards, the likelihood of drawing something that's impactful enough in the late yeah. game. Um, I found, just I found that I wanted me... to put in the, uh, the medal ceremonies and things like that because yeah, that's in cool. the mid game you never have the resources so card draw feels less important it's like the yeah. late game is when you want to draw cards yeah but then more. it still costs you one resource to trigger his effect to draw a card yeah so it's a bit like it's nice to have when you've just when you've got that turn where you're like oh i, I don't need this like my opponent's already claimed i might as well do this draw a card it's a medal ceremony mm. bang everything's now slightly better will feel yeah. good um yeah. But I think that's just the nature of kind of the way the hero decks seem to be coming out at the moment is like they're not particularly big because they haven't got like the Devastators or the mm. uh, Retributions or mm. the Avengers that you can kind of slam down. You've basically got Home 1 yeah, and Reinforcement Walkers, which is a neutral card. So the villains also get to play that against you. Like mm. it just feels yeah, to I'm... me that like con- hero control... Other than, you know, you've got, like, Hans and Lukes, which have those kind of, like, instant, like, drop-down impact, like, like trading on the board almost. Um, mm-hmm. But you don't have that spooky 10 drop, which, you know, has Steadfast and Overwhelm and does 10 damage when it lands and and mm. all that kind of stuff. Do you, so, Do you think that's a design philosophy that they'll keep going forward, or do you think that's just, like, the first game that just hasn't? Because I think I, I saw someone say this... I can't take full credit for it, but mm. it plays into like broadly that being a theme plays into the thematics of mm. the like rebels have to hit fast and hit quick and get out. Yeah. While the empire assembling their, you know, there is yeah. idea that they're going to have. Yeah. And, and that's kind of it, right? Like home one mm. is the best ship they've got. Mm. Uh, and that's an eight drop and it is really good. Um, mm. But they don't have like, the, you know, the rest of their fleet is like, frigates and yeah like corvettes and stuff right it's not big mm-hmm. spooky stuff which we've all kind of got in like um uh the unique green sentinel ship really good bright hope mm-hmm. you know for that four drop big booty you get to bounce back a, a land unit you know fantastic mm-hmm. card but again yeah. that's like their main stuff yeah um where at least the resistance fleet was bigger so we might get some more kind of hero side, yeah. like, you know, Republic-esque um, Star Destroyers. And especially when we go back to the Clone Wars and we get kind of all the Clone War 
all yeah. the Clone Wars ships and stuff, I think we'll see Hero get mm. bigger, more con- like bigger end yeah. game cards. That's um, that's an interesting point as well. Like I didn't even consider that. I was just thinking in the binary of hero and villain, but yeah, mm. like you say, that's a very rebel thing is not having these huge things. And Republic hero could have these things. You know, it could just yeah. be a weakness of of, well, not even a weakness, but just a trait in. Yeah, uh, well, it's, it's like when you when you look at the ground units, though, it's like uh, the heroes have much better ground units, like like Luke, Han, Chewie, Lando to some extent. And then you mm. look at the villain, um, like kind of like top end ground units, and they've got Seventh Sister. Mm. Like all the admirals are fairly cheap dudes. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like that ebb and flow, right? Like Hero have really strong ground units because they've mm. got these really big important characters, where yeah. <laughs> where the Empire just have these like huge weapons of war. Yeah, and Hero Green as well, especially has like uh, the generic was it Battlefield Marine pretty good yeah. to be dropped yeah, yeah. uh and the sentinel and echo base defender seems yeah. very good yeah yeah i would the like to see card. echo base um i would like to see more sentinel cards with like just big big booties like you know i big want to see them with like two card. attack six defense um yeah. so they're not going to necessarily kill the things that are attacking them um mm. but if they get attacked twice by the same thing it will kill them yeah, um, and you're like demanding multiple trades. Yeah, because at the moment, yeah. Sentinels tend to feel like they trade one for one, mm. which is nice to kind of like have that taunt to be like, quick, hit this, and then they just hit it. And then they yeah, also like, die, but it's yeah. just like, it doesn't help defend you very well. No, yeah, but it's it's good for like, yeah, basically demanding a turn out of something that's really scary, like a Vader that doesn't have overwhelm. So you're just like, cool, kill this, please. Well, yeah. figure out something else to... Yeah, stop and, you. and 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 like well, Vader's also a great example of a great ground unit, but again, big Jedi. Um, mm. But then again, yeah, it's like you know, and Vader should be able to kill most Sentinels in the game um, yeah. because he's Vader, and like Luke should yeah. be able to kill most Sentinels in the game because Luke. But I'm feeling mm. like Echo Base Defenders are four three, and yeah. you, think, you know, Greedo, who the one drop can kill it, yeah, which is obviously true. a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic trade. Don't play Echo Base Defender when the opponent's got a Greedo on the table. Um, but it would be nice whether, if it could take that hit from Greedo and then he'd at least have to gamble yeah. his like shoots last ability to see if he could finish it off or something else would then have to trade into it where at the moment yeah. I just feel like it's it's nice because it also has full damage so it can force the Vader and you can kind of like play mm. some health into it but yeah, I, I, I want to see more low attack yeah I mean I, I really like um Baze, obviously, but also Chewy, the leader. Like, their their stats are quite nice with the grit, and like they're not they don't have like a huge attack to begin with, especially Chewy, um, the leader. But yeah. that kind of they don't necessarily have to have grit. Grit's probably a bit OP with with mm. this like larger health we were talking about. But yeah, to yeah to have something a bit more like that would would be cool to see. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And if, you know, playing Chewy last week um, was like really interesting to see mm. what it would be like to you know when you play a a, a fleet lieutenant um and you give him sentinel but then you're also attacking with something else and you know that something else that you're attacking with is if it's another ground unit that's protected and yeah. they have to go through the uh the fleet lieutenant or mm. or the other one so it's like but then also i was playing it with ecl and it became a very interesting um thing of like oh if i play uh you drop you wing reinforcement okay, I'm playing all these cards from my deck, but then I can't give them Sentinel and I can't ECL them. Or am I playing this card from my hand? Am I going to play it with Sentinel or am I going to play it with ECL? Um, so mm. it's a lot of like thinking about all these on-play triggers, about how to get them to interact mm. um, together optimally. And I lost one of my best of threes against Leighton, who some of the old listeners will be aware of, and he's been gloating about it all week. Um, it's been unbearable. Uh, but he ma- made a, a kind of a control Luke deck um and it, it just absolutely smashed me i couldn't go taller than it i only, I only had one home one because i'm uh, i haven't managed to secure others yet uh but it, they weren't even close <laughs> absolutely mm. smashed and it felt bad so it's gone back in the binder um, yeah and i'm gonna play something else like you know with no big tournaments coming up um it's just quite nice to just be like which hero do i want to make a fun thematic uh kind of deck with and just kind of and why is it hand solo 
Uh, and it is Han Solo this week. Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do it because I haven't got any Luke's at the moment, so maybe I won't be. But uh, yeah, we're definitely going to be playing some, you know, some chill stuff probably for the rest of the set. Um, yeah, I've got a um, a list that doesn't have Luke in it, so I'll, I'll find that your way. Yeah. Um, but to to get us back, to drag us back on topic, um, get us back on target. Mm. Uh, they were saying the devs were saying that Cassian's late game is great and he's been overlooked by the community potentially mm. um I, I did want to ask this is why i'm dragging us back by the collar here yeah um to i did want to ask you so for those that don't play card games or this is their first card game etc yeah something you should know about card games is drawing cards really good <laughs> like really really good um in any card game yeah. in swoo and i've not played a huge amount of swoo i'm still learning as i go it feels almost less impactful. What do you think to that statement? It feels less impactful. Than like the average card game. For me, that's how I've found it. I just want to know what your... So what your Swoo's in a really time. interesting position uh, because you get to draw two cards a turn and no game lets you draw two cards a turn. But you're having to resource one of those cards. Or not, you don't have to. Um, you know, Sabine is five and done. Um and I always find myself kind of being like, oh, I'll never play this, so I'll just stick it in my resource pile uh, when I'm getting into the, the later games and stuff. So, so yes, I guess there is an element of that. Sometimes when I draw my two cards, I'm like, I, you know, I, I don't really need one of these, so I will just resource it um, to hopefully, in two turns' time, be able to play two fairly big threats. Um, interesting. Interesting thought. I... Yes, probably. I at, at the moment, I would probably say that drawing a card in Swoo is not as good as drawing a card would be in, say, Flesh and Blood. Um, okay, let us know in the comments in the chat mm. what you think, because it's not. It's no, there's no le like right or wrong. It's just yeah. how I've heard. Yeah. I, and I don't think it's a, obviously. I'm not saying it's actively negative or neutral. I think it is mm. good because you get to you have more options on what you do resource, right? Yeah. Um, and you you develop your you see more of your cards and you can develop your your turnout with mm -hmm. more information etc 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 it's good it's very good yeah it's just versus other games i found it not as good so yeah, yeah that was just my my only other point when they said cassian's really underrated his late game's amazing i i, I played a, i built a few decks and played it on uh, on felt on force table and was a bit underwhelmed by a lot of the time what mm. i was left in my hand what i could pay for and what i can because a lot of the time you can't pay for those cards no um, because of the resource system yeah and and that's kind of what i was saying like what you want to do is you when you use casting's ability to draw a card you want to draw something big and you want mm. to just be able to be like yes this is my i've got this for next turn now and i just don't yeah. think hero at the moment has that ability to to have those big exciting plays it's like cool i've drawn another battle fleet battlefield marine time to go wide um mm. and it doesn't feel great yeah maybe it'll improve as the set goes as the, as we get new stats and, set and stuff like that yeah yeah he's a rare isn't he cassian i'm pretty sure yeah i think he's a rare yeah yeah so well, you know um, guaranteed yeah. to be better like guaranteed I, I would say that if i could get more card draw into ig88 <laughs> i'd be down for that right loads yeah. of one drops loads of card draw that would be really good yeah it doesn't i think matter. command has a draw a card mechanic doesn't it yeah, it's got a uh, mission briefing draw two. For no, yeah, sure, but I mean on the sorry, not command. I'm I'm completely lying to you. Aggression, the um, the double aggression spec. Oh yeah. L. Yeah. I'm pretty sure one of those modes is draw a card. Draw a card. Huge. Yeah, it's in it's mono... in my it's in my double red IG88 deck. If anybody wants go. it, let me there know. Mono red IG. Let's go. I um... gotta play that this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> No. Um, the IG88 cannot escape our hatred no, on any no. of our episodes. It's just going to be how it it's is gonna going to be. It's going to be typical. He is so bad. It yeah. hurts my skin. Um, obviously, people think that Jin is worse, and she probably is. Mm. Uh, but IG is atrocious. Yeah. Absolutely atrocious. But, I mean, yeah, there's space for, like, yeah, if they have a bunch of one cost next set or, yeah. you know. Speaking we'll of another we'll... card that I think is atrocious, but apparently it is really underrated, is a pirate spaceship shuttle thing. The the 3-4 for 2, which is incredible. Was it a 3-4 for 3? Um, it's I got really big stats for its cost, um, but you have to bounce a card back 
um, mm. it, that's in play. And if you only have it in play, it bounces itself back to your hand. Yeah, pirated starfighter is a two four two four raid one when played. Return a not friendly non needy unit to his owner's hand. And cost two or three, two two. Yeah, absolutely yeah. push stats. Um, mm -hmm. And there are so many cards that's really good to bounce back. Layer, I'd bounce a layer back to my hand every mm -hmm. single day. Um, yeah, because you could play her for one to then play this for two, and you're just like, Bruh. Yeah. like you've got a really good yeah. off on. That's a really good turn three play. Um, so think, maybe it is I, I, I've just convinced myself in those two sentences actually I'm in my next hero yellow deck I'm putting them in <laughs> just like yeah. that I've done it I think it's something that rewards synergy with like more when played abilities which again mm. we could see more of going forward um, in there's a lovely little TCG called Sorcery which I made you play when you were here it was um, lovely there's a death speaker avatar or something that is basically like a necromancer um and he gets to play his creatures from the graveyard but then they die straight away mm. um so the point of that is you play everything that has a when played ability because so you basically get them as spells yeah um so yeah when i saw this i was like ah one day yeah. but they're saying it's it's underrated in this set so maybe that day is now yeah. um but it did make me go, yeah, if you want like more like Alliance X Wing, you know, squadron leaders, whatever they are that give the experience tokens. Yeah. You could just keep bouncing them and keep getting experience yeah. tokens. Seems pretty strong. Yeah, it feels better in hero than villain. Uh, mainly because all the on play like give mm. tokens in, in villain cost like four for yeah. like, the uh tie advance and stuff, and that's way too expensive to be bouncing back. But if you're doing a yeah, or a rogue uh, a fleet leader mm. oh no not a fleet leader. rebel leader oh god these cards one day i'm going to remember them right, right. but like fleet left hand and and yeah. uh, uh wing oh i'll stick them up on screen sorry all dear listeners but they yeah. all sound the same you know what i mean they they play you play them and they give you like experience tokens yeah or Keep they you. make someone attack or, or all that kind yeah. of stuff and and when you and that's kind of their main effect and the rest of it's just like oh cool i've got this very mediocre body now um yeah. so it's nice to to keep getting and, and Leia is kind of the perfect example of that you know she is a 2-2 it is not good her one played ability is incredibly good <laughs> so good yeah so good so yeah. crazy good yeah um, um, and that's what kind of inspired me to go into like Han this week um, mm -hmm. I'll need to have a dig around see what cards I've got but I want to get some I want to get yellow hero into a deck um, and yeah. just mess around with Leia yeah I mean one thing that they you know when they I think they did touch on how good how strong Bobber Bo is and one thing they said is they they wanted to see they wanted they wanted the heroes that people want to see on the board on the board yeah. so your layers your vaders your bobbers they're going to be all a bit pushed because they want that they want yeah. them to be strong throughout the game's life cycle I suppose and I really get that because before I played Destiny I played X-Wing and it wasn't that fun when Boba Fett was unplayable but some bozo that you've never heard of from the expanded universe generic like, mercenary so. number three exactly compile no slave one, one better than boba fett yeah. Like, yeah so i think they've yeah. taken on board that sort of feedback from other ffg games which is really cool because yeah yeah like you say you don't want to see yeah i've, mate, I've got my number. fingers crossed big time uh mm. for maul being a good card because in destiny he was awful unplayable yeah, well, garbage the inquisitor uh, grand inquisitor was unplayable and i tried to play him in yeah uh it's destiny so who knows yeah they've made him pretty good this time i think yeah i just want do i want darth maul or do i want like syndicate maul or do i want mandalorian maul? Maul? surely, My God, surely. so many mauls give me all of them yeah i think yeah it depends on, well it's going to be mandalorian era right so what's that that's syndicate maul is it he's dead by that point oh he's dead oh well it yeah. could be anyone then spoilers uh for... set, well set so set three is going to be clone wars right i think yeah, so, yeah so, so he could be in more you see proper more then at least yeah i imagine yeah. um so anyway that was the dev chat roundup yeah we ramble on anymore yeah uh we do have carl joining us hopefully in the next episode we'll we'll have a nice yeah. chat with him and and talk to him about what what we've got planned because currently as you can probably tell there is nothing planned so if you guys want to see anything in particular or, you know, just let us know in the comments. Just leave a lovely like and subscribe and a comment. Share, no, like, subscribe, if you would. 
Yeah, please do. Um, and yeah, to go coincide with that, there will be a new logo coming and other things because it's not just me and Danny anymore. We're trying to expand the channel um, for all of our benefits, so the channel yeah. can cover more things uh, to a better degree of quality, shall yes. we say? And one day we will release a deck tech. It's going to happen. I feel one it day. in my bones. Well, we're uh, not going to do it until someone asks for it. So if you don't want to see it, mm. just don't leave a comment because we won't do it. But if you do want to see it, yeah, leave a comment. Yeah, there's also uh, been rumblings um, from the European Gauntlet, which uh, is an old Destiny like European playtest group. Because obviously, I don't know if you watched uh, the pod from KTOD that I sent you yesterday, James, um, but they've uh, gone back big on the Patreon and the Hyperloop, which they've got a different name now. They had a really funny self dig at all the old Hyperloop people who had come back for the KTOD. Um, Very nice. Uh, podcast but they've obviously um you know set up their discord and they are, they're starting to drive that um you know that big competitive community that that the hyperloop was during destiny um yeah. and uh klaus from your destiny kind of ran or tried, tried to drive the the european side of of that um and that group chat still exists and there has there has been some murmurings in it over the last week oh, cool. when people have started playing so um nice. very possible that um the the european uh, gauntlet well i think it was called uh we'll, we'll be back um so we might have more news on that uh in coming weeks a lot of maybe news right now for yeah, you guys a lot of maybe. So keep you on the edge of your seat right that maybe. is everything for this dispatch i think james anything else to say before we go no just i'm sorry that you listened to this <sighs> that's fair see you next time this is the Alliance Dispatch. Over and out.